everybody, and welcome back to All The Mods 9. How your guys' day been? Good? Let me know down in the comments below. So last episode, we got into multi-blocks at our fusion reactor. This guy's been doing very well. As you can see, we got tons of liquid europium, and I've doubled, or actually six times the size of the thing. We got six of them now stacked on top of each other. I've been working on processing up a lot more, but I've learned something while building these guys. I ended up having like all three of these guys here built, but I had to tear this one down because for the recipe I want to run in here, which is going to be liquid trinium or tritanium, this one requires a special tier. This guy actually requires a tier two mark uh, reactor. So you can see by the energy to start, this requires 200 million EU. If we look at the actual stats of the actual reactors, it says maximum energy storage is 160 million for the Mark 1. Mark 2 is 320 million. So it turns out we actually need the Mark 2 to be able to make the liquid tritanium. And to get the Mark 2 reactor, we're going to need to do some research inside the research station. Now, I've been doing a lot of like learning and understanding on how these things are actually supposed to be built. And there was basically no videos or anything that I could find anyway explaining how this thing is supposed to work and how you're supposed to build it. Well, apart from building it, it's actually not too bad because it kind of tells you in JEI. But how these things are meant to be set up and worked, there's nothing. So I am going to show you exactly how this thing works after doing a lot of testing and understanding. And hopefully anyone else who's running into this issue or understand or learning how this thing works will be able to use this video. So how does this thing actually work? So in my bag here, I've got myself a ton of these components, and these are actually going to be all of the parts used to build it. Um, just need, uh, not that, this. And the easy way to build it, actually, is I learned, is a terminal. I was trying to figure out, like, how do I insta-build multi-blocks for testing? Turns out I can just use a terminal. Once you have the machine down and you have all the ingredients in your inventory, you just shift right-click it, insta-build the entire block for you. Doesn't place the input and output ports properly, but that's just a minor detail. So we want to say like this, uh, data reception hatch go here. Up here, we want to sell our maintenance hatch and then we want to give it power. So let's give it a four amp energy converter. And these two slots here are just regular old computer casing. And there you go. The multi-block is formed. So we just want to give it power. So just give me that, rotate it and invert the power. There we go. Now just grab a point and this thing is more or less ready to go. So bypass limit and that. Right, so that's now filling up with power. So, how do we actually make this thing work? Well, if we have a look at, like, say, our ZPM tier energy hatch, which is the main thing we really want right now, this is going to require research. And if you have a look down here, it says minimum computation is 8 CWU. How do you produce CWU? It isn't built into it. You need to provide it using these guys here. These are high performance computation arrays. I think in old versions of Greg Tech, it used to be called the quantum computer. So if we were to grab out, I think I made myself some input hatches, uh, computation input hatches or output hatches. There we go. And if we shift right click this thing, there we go. It built it for us. So the whole multi-block is built. So we have power, maintenance, and we got ourselves the data output. In the front or on the side right here, it can be either side as long as you flip the multi-block around. You can see on the bottom row here above the underneath the heat vents. It's advanced computer casing. So if you were to build this thing inverted, uh, it'd still work. Um, but this is just the way that the terminal builds it for us. So we're going to we're run with this. So the nine blocks right here, this is how we're going to be setting up the actual thing to make computation power. So we have this thing here called a HPCA computation component. It produces four CWU per tick and requires two cooling. We have a look here. We have this active cooling component. This guy produces uh, up to two cooling but requires eight millibuckets of PCB coolant, which is a new fluid I crafted. And I'll show you that's made in a second to actually make this thing work. And actually speak of that, I need myself a LV input hatch to actually provide this thing with the coolant. So it should still form once I build in the side. So the active co cooling components need to be all touching, I believe. And then in here, you can just put down your four of these. Thing is built and now if we have a look inside here the maximum it will provide is 16 cwu and we only needed eight to make ourselves our zpm energy hatch which is good so how you connect these things together is you need yourself what's called normal optical pipe and this works like a cable 
and this thing can only accept two connections. So if I were to connect this here with the wire cutters, and if I try to connect another section, it doesn't work. As you can see, unless I disconnect here and then I can run a different way, but then I can't reconnect it there. So this thing can only have two connections. So how am I supposed to connect the other four up? And I'll show you that now later, because that does require the Mark II reactor. So once I give this thing here some power, like so, this thing is almost ready to go. We just need to provide it with the PCB coolant. So PCB, I've made a small bit of it, and this is made by mixing together distilled water and pyrochlorinated bisphenol. Bisphenol is made by mixing together bisphenol dust and chlorine. Uh, it gives you hydrochloric acid as a byproduct. The bisphenol dust is made in a chemical reactor with either benzene and toluene or benzene and oxygen. I'm doing the benzene oxygen route. And that gives us the dust. So what I need to do is probably just grab out a dark tank for now. And uh, 64 buckets, that should be plenty to get this thing running. Uh, PCB coolant, just grab out as much as that as I can and put it in here. Well, 16 buckets and yeah, this thing is ready to go. So let's grab ourselves out an LUV data or input hatch for power. Grab ourselves out a data orb and once we put these inside the object holder, it should start working. There we go. And it's making a weird noise. And even though this thing is providing like a ton of energy, uh, it doesn't seem to be providing enough. And I don't know how to fix that. I don't think increasing the amps on the actual converter will do anything. So you kind of just have to wait. It doesn't take too long. It says 800 seconds, but you can see the time's going very fast. We're already nearly halfway. Okay, I didn't realize how fast it runs out of coolant. Uh, these guys here broke, so I need to break them and probably replace them. Wait, did I not get them back at all? Did they just... I heard them pick up my inventory. Oh, did they just drop as regular casing? Oh, okay. So that's why you need to make sure this thing is provided with PCB coolant at all times. So just to make sure that doesn't happen again, I'm just going to hook up an interface with PCB coolant to provide it. Yeah, because it does say on the computation thing, uh, will be damaged if um, there's not enough heating. Can be damaged by HP HPCA overheating. So I guess it doesn't actually drop it once you break it if it's overheated. But did it craft it? No, it's still almost done, but we ran out of computation. So I need to remake those. All right, now I have the three new ones made and this thing should be provided with coolant the whole time. And off it goes again. And now it's done. So now we've got the data orb for the ZPM energy hatch. So that's essentially how the data or the research station actually works. Now I'll show you how to connect these up later, but for now we can come down here. I think my ZPM energy hatch is in this pattern provider. Yes, it is. So if we just stick this in here, search ZPM, we should be able to craft ourselves our energy hatch. Says we have everything, so go. Why are you not crafting? DPM energy hatch, vanadium, you should be working. Oh, right. I forgot. It also requires a ZPM tier power. So how do we provide it with that power? Well, right now we have our LV4 amp energy converter. That's not going to be good enough. We need to use two UV energy hatches. And you explain that in the comments because I was uh, under the impression that even though this is a four amp one, it should be the same as two of these together. Right? But no, apparently this thing just overclocks rather than providing a new tier of crafting. So to actually craft it, you just need to give it two of the same energy inputs. And now if we look at it in here, it says ZPM tier crafting. And now we just need to provide it here with some power. So what's that? AX cable. And now the thing is working. It takes 30 seconds to make one ZPM energy hatch. And the first ZPM energy hatch is actually going to go on our assembler in here. Because to make ourselves the Mark II fusion reactor... If we look up in here, I've more or less got everything else we needed. Uh, we have all the fusion coil blocks, um, but the actual casing requires EPM tier crafting in an assembler. So that's where the first one of these are going to go. So just give me out a 4 amp ZPM energy converter. Should be pretty simple to make. There we go. And we're just going to hook this up back here. All right. And now this thing should have ZPM tier crafting. Yes, it does. So if we look up the fusion reactor, it should have enough materials here to make 500 of them. Might need to craft a few more quantum processors, but essentially it is now making and it only takes five seconds to do it. That is amazing. And the next thing I'd like to get is ourselves the next tier of paralyzation hatch. 
So to do that, we need to do a little bit more research because we need ourselves ZPM sensors and emitters. They also require some data. So eight CPU or eight processing power. And this one here also requires four. So if we just grab ourselves out two of the LUV versions. So one sensor and I need to craft myself another emitter. And we'll grab out a data hatch or data orb. Let's go over here and craft ourselves that research. So in you go. And this is going to take 400 seconds, so it won't take too long. This thing is constantly being provided with PCP coolant. Uh, I didn't realize how fast it works. Uh, it says in here they're still broken, but they're not. They're working fine. I guess while they're crafting, there's one more thing I need to set up. We need to make ourselves a new tier of CPU. Wow, you can hear that thing from miles away. Computation, let's turn that down because that is kind of annoying. Actually, it's already done. Yeah, there we go. ZPM sensor. And the emitter is still currently crafting because it's missing. Oh, this thing here is crafting six more and then it'll craft that one. Okay. So while that's doing that, let's go over here and set up a new setup that I want to get going. And that is going to be making the new tier of uh, processors. So they're called crystal processors. Uh, as you can see in here, crystal processor suit computer. The first version is going to be the UV version. But this is going to require a brand new thing called an SOC crystal. How do you make that? Well, apart from needing a ZPM tier laser engraver and a blue lens, the actual crystal CPU is made in a laser engraver with a crystal chip engraved. The engraved version is made in electric blast smelter with helium, olivine plate and a raw crystal chip or an emerald plate and a raw crystal chip. But we're going to be using this version here. But how do you get the raw crystal chip? There's two ways to get it. You have a 10% chance in an autoclave with liquid reopium and an exquisite emerald. Or you have a 100% guarantee using a raw crystal chip part and liquid europium. And it does require a clean room. So that's why we're going to set it up in here. So we need ourselves an autoclave and a forge hammer. We're going to set up the autoclave here and the forge hammer there. We're going to grab ourselves out an interface. Okay. You're going to go here and we're going to grab out a robot arm. Uh, any version will do. We only need to input in one crystal chip at a time. So we're just going to tell you to input and only supply exactly one. Okay, so if we grab out now a bucket of europium and exquisite emeralds, you can make them fairly easily inside a laser engraver. Pretty simple. So I've made a thousand of them. So if we put these in here, like so, we give it power now. So I just need myself um, the 2X, the ZPM superconductor is this Naquata wire. Uh, no, it's not this version. It's the ur uranium rhodium dequalinide wire. He loses zero amps over meter and a ZPM tier, and even just the 2X provides 16 amps of power, which is crazy. So we connect that there, grab ourselves out a 4 amp ZPM energy converter. Let's make 10 of them because we're going to need a lot more of them. Uh, we're waiting on the wires to be crafted because this guy here is still crafting. Uh, scheduled 6, crafting 300. Okay, this is probably going to take a while. I might need to pause this crafting recipe just to craft these two things. All right, and he's already online and he's crafting it. So we just needed to craft at least one. There's a 10% chance to do it, so hopefully it will do it. And the emitter is done now, so let's just grab ourselves out some data orbs and let's go craft this one now. And which one of these have the ZPM emitter? You have the ZPM sensor, so the data orb will go inside you. And I think this one here is the emitter. Yes. Oh, wait, I need to wait for it to craft. All right, the data is done. And I just requested two more ZPM energy hatches because we are going to need those to be able to craft these things now. But first, let's continue what we're doing just in here. So we can see the thing has made ourselves two raw crystal chips. So we can stop the exporting of that. All right. And I just want to grab myself an export bus. Uh, wait, am I might thinking of this right now because I want this thing to be constantly filled with europium. Um, and we want it to be able to export out the chips into another interface yeah yeah okay i have an idea we'll grab out another interface we'll stick you right here and we'll grab out a pump okay just an luv pump and you might be wondering why i have nearly three thousand of these for some reason the assembly line has a bit of an issue for some reason i don't know if i cross dimensions or just randomly it happens it gets stuck crafting these things and it stays at 100 crafted but it just fills my inventory up with them. And it happened a few times, especially with like the data bank here. We've got 50,000 of them. And I think it also happened with the Mark 1 reactor. I've since deleted them, but I've got over like 12,000 of them. 
I don't know why that happens. Sometimes the assembly lines just glitch out and I, it's confusing. But essentially in here, Europium. We want this guy here just to be pumping out. It won't use too much. It's only 16 millipockets at a time, so that's fine. This guy here, we want him to pull in. So insert in liquid Europium. Once we connect the actual cable here, like so. So you should start filling with liquid Europium once he comes online. And is he? Now he is. And then this guy here, he's going to crush down all of these raw crystal chips. So if we tell this thing here to auto eject items out into this, this guy here with the robot arm is only going to be supplying one crystal chip. So if we stick these in here, it's going to crush them down into the raw crystal chip parts, which shouldn't have gone in that way. I probably need to set a filter. Oh, wait, no, you're supposed to auto eject into you as well. And actually, you're supposed to auto eject out the top. My bad. So auto eject out the top. The actual crystal parts then. We have 25 of them. Take these out. Stick these in here. And they will craft us 100% of the time a crystal CPU chip. So that will get pumped out. And then this guy here will try and provide one. And once this guy's internal buffer fills up, he will only keep one in his inventory and the rest can be used for crafting. So it's an infinite loop for crafting them, which is amazing. So why did I make the two ZPM energy hatches? Well, now it's time to set up power to actually engrave these guys. Right now it's trying to craft us one and it can't because it doesn't have enough power. So four amp ZPM energy converter. So break this and break that. Stick you there, stick you there. And off he goes. And then I'll do the same over here. All right, now we're ready. And there's one more pattern I need to set up and that's with the lime laser lens. So pattern, lime laser lens, and you are going to be crafting this chip right here. Do I already have that pattern? I do already have that pattern. Never mind. So now this thing, I also need to upgrade the ZPM. So craft me actually another ZPM energy hatch. And actually, now that we have the new tier of ZPM emitter and sensor, we can craft ourselves here a new paralyzation hatch. It's going to require the crystal CPU. But if we look in here, we should have everything for it. Available for SOC. Yep. Off it goes. Crafting us some new CPUs, the crystal processor. That also, I think, required a new tier of circuit board, the multi-layer one. That is just made with platinum foil and a multi-layer circuit board, which is fiber reinforced and more palladium plate, uh, foil. So I'll wait till he's done and then I can upgrade the ZPM. I forgot, actually, the crystal mainframe processor isn't made in the assembler, crystal or the circuit assembler. It's made in the assembly line, meaning we are also going to need to do some research on that requiring a ZPM crystal processor. Whoops, forgot about that. Now, do we have enough computation power to do this? Yes, we do. And this is going to take 1600 seconds. That's a while. And actually, I'm going to upgrade this guy here to ZPM, which should allow it to run a lot faster. Oh, yeah, that's more like it. And you can see he's not running out of power. All right. Now that that research is done, which one of these guys are holding the actual uh, mainframe processor? This guy. Wow, this guy's taking up a lot of things. All right, and now he's crafting us a crystal processor mainframe. And we need four of them per paralyzation hatch. So paralyzation, we'll wait till this was done and then we'll set up that recipe as well. I also did just go ahead and upgrade the mixer here to UV tier by combining two ZPM energy hatches because there is a material we're going to need now. And that is going to be, um, do I already have the pattern somewhere? It's going to require a uh, europium dust. Enriched Aquala, Trinium, Tie for. Yeah, do I not have the pattern for that anymore? Oh, no, he's right here. This is another dust we're going to need now. And that needs to be smelted in a furnace with titanium. And the reason we need this now is for... Actually, can I even remember now? <laughs> I think it's a cable we're needed for. Uh, I actually can't remember. I know it's needed for something. I just can't remember right now. But our mainframe is done. So, paralyzation. Let's get the rest of these built. So, ultimate. Craft me one. And in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade all these guys here to run at ZPM. All right, everything's upgraded here. And we've also got our six, our ultimate uh, paralyzation hatch. I'm just going to stick this on the mixer because mixer is something we always need a lot of. So if we were to say indium, indium uh, dust here, we're always needing a ton of this. It does 144 at a time. I think it only did 128 before. So 30 seconds is plenty of time for it to fill up the internal buffer. Let's see how much it crafts then after 30 seconds. 
Also, the more things it needs to do with the paralyzation hatches, the longer the time it's going to take. Now it does 272. I think the maximum it does is 512 items at a time. So that is fast. And it still only takes 30 seconds. Amazing. Right, let's see if we can get ourselves our Mark II reactor built. Uh, oh yeah, the fusion reactor casing. Continue crafting me the 400 uh, minus 8. Because I think we have 108 already. Yes. Right, so for the Mark II reactor... We need to do some research, and that is going to require a Mark 1 reactor with a data orb, but acquire 16 computations, so we already have that. So data orb and reactor, and this guy goes, and craft. All right, the reactor data is done, so now let's just go stick it in over here. And now there's another material I think I just saw while I was setting up the pattern for this guy, and that is Naquada, a version of Naquada. I think it's called Naquadria. Yeah, so this double Naquaria plate is needed to make ourselves the actual reactor itself. But how do we get it? Because we clearly don't have any. We have impure Naquaria solution and Naquaria solution. So we should be able to process that up for it. So to make the hot ingot, it requires the dust. But I think we need to make this guy here, Naquaria sulfate dust. The sulfate is made by centrifuging acidic Naquaria solution. And the acidic version is made by mixing sulfuric acid and the quadria solution together. So that means we need a mixer. Uh, this guy here is doing something else. So let's set up another simple setup right here. All right. So we got ourselves the quadria solution and sulfuric acid going into this mixer right here. We want it to auto eject out then into this interface. I don't think it produces items in it at all. Okay. And the only issue is now I don't have a cell for this. So we're going to have to set up a cell. And then we just need to centrifuge it. And we'll get ourselves Naquadria Waste, which we can distill back into more Naquadria Waste and Sulfuric Acid and Gallium Sulfide. Hmm. All right, let's go make a cell for that. Ooh, our ultimate control hatch is done. I'm going to put this on our assembler. How fast will it run now? Really? It's only doing two? Is our production? No, it's nothing to do with that. I don't know. It should be going faster or making more at a time, but I guess there must be some sort of like limit of items. All right, let's go to set up that cell. All right, now we're, we're pl making plenty of this. Let's go set it up in the centrifuge. Any of these guys not online? It looks like this one right here is not doing anything. Uh, your output... We need a fluid uh, input one. I guess I'll just add a fluid input hatch right here. All right, will you turn online? Yes, you are. 96 and a quadrosulfate at a time. That's actually very good. All right, and now that we're doing that, the actual sulfate... Needs to be blasted in a furnace with hydrogen and it produces sulfuric acid as a byproduct and it requires a trinium coil, which we do already have. So, this one is oxygen, so it's this one here. This should be hydrogen. Oh, these are all nitrogen. Okay, so I need myself a quad input hatch and I'm just going to replace, say, this one here. Just take this back here and add nitrogen into this guy or hydrogen. So he should get both. That's an output hatch. My bad. So he now has that. And now we want to set up an exporter right here for the Naquada solution. So he's going to fill up with this, but he's not going to work because he's missing something else. And that's going to be the sulfuric acid. So we're just going to grab ourselves out an output bus or a hatch. Any basic one will do. And we'll just throw an ender tank on it. I'm not too worried. We have a crazy setup uh, taking stuff out. So you and you. You should come online. You have the required stuff. Oh, ZPM to your power. My bad. Let me upgrade these guys here. And actually, I think I want to try out the 4 amp one. If we can craft one of these, this thing should work way faster than just a regular single ZPM energy hatch. All right, connect that there. And this thing should come online then. And it did. Nice. So now that that's being cooked up and... We're oh my God, that scared me. <laughs> okay, that actually scared me. So we should be getting ourselves now hot Naquadria. Uh, are we? How long does it take to cook one? 15 seconds. It should have made one by now. Ah, there it is. So hot. And this needs to be cooled in a vacuum freezer with liquid helium. And that should work by just putting the export there. All right, cool. Now we just have to wait for enough of it to build up. And we should be able to make our Mark II fusion reactor controller. All right, it's happening again. Um, like I said earlier, somehow it's stuck crafting these guys. Yeah, ZPM emitters, I only have 10,000 of them. That's not supposed to be happening. Which one is doing it? 
That's LUV emitter. So this guy right here, you can see he's stuck at 100% like completion, but he is still crafting them, which should not be happening. And I think it's a bug with the exporter because you can see it skipped one and exported everything else out then. So I don't know. The only way to fix it is just to take out an item and then it just resets. Um, but now I now have 10,000 VPM emitters. I'll probably delete nearly all of them, but yeah, I don't know why that happens. It just does. Just wanted to show you that. So right now I think we have everything to make ourselves our Mark II fusion reactor. So you go there and we'll just remove this bit of brick. This is just a placeholder so we can place it down properly. Grab out our terminal. Should have everything in here. And if we place structure incomplete, because I think it leaves out two slots back here. Yep. And now all we need to do is hook this thing up to power. So, um, yeah, the power uh, ports are supposed to go here. And we're just going to use ZPM energy hatches because why not? All right. If I've done everything correctly now, once I place down this last fusion reactor casing, the whole thing should construct and turn online. Wait for the power to fill up. And there it goes. Now we're making liquid titanium. And I don't think I actually have a cell for this. Um, is it going somewhere? Oh, you know where it's going? I think I have an input bus or an hatch inside this thing here i think it's going in no it's not this one i think it's over here then yeah it's going inside this input interface right here so i just need to make a cell for it so do i have a spare one i do liquid tritanium stick that in here and is it filling up yes it is so we just need to wait for i think about 12 buckets of it and that should be enough to get enough of the tritanium foil to make ourselves our network switch to hook up all of our quantum or uh, computation devices all together. So I guess I'll see you when this thing is um, done crafting enough. You know what? I'm going to try and craft the rest of these right now. All right. So we kind of ran into another bit of a rabbit hole. It turns out for making ourselves the network switch, which we almost have everything for it. It does require the enriched aquatic tritanium europium dironanide wire. We can make the dust, but unfortunately to cook it and um, to actually make like that dust if i can have a look at it in here it does require a tritanium coil now unfortunately the tritanium coil requires a uv tier assembler meaning we're gonna have to make this guy here and the only thing about it is it's going to require a few other things like this stuff here yeah that's all possible tritanium we are now making uv electric motors requires fine americanum so we're going to have to set up another reactor making that. So that is made by combining liquid chromium and luten lutenium. Lutenium comes from liquid silicon and lanthium. And this requires 800 million EU. Meaning I need... Wait, no, that's not right. 80 million. Okay. So we can do this in the Mark 1 reactor. So I think that is going to be this reactor right here. Is it? So... Arsenic vapor and ruthenium. Uh, you are going to make the darstenium. That's the wrong one. Now, quadria and americanum. Nope, that's not you. It must be this guy then. Uh, lutenium and chromium. No. Silicon and lanthium. Is it this one? Oh, okay. So this is the reactor I need to set up right now. So I need to set up this one and then get that one over there set up. And then we should be able to make our americanum and make ourselves our fine wire. And then we should be able to make ourselves our UV assembler. Because I did actually add a request reward. Uh, I think it's called like Dartanium or something. I did get 21 of these plates. So I should be able to make myself like the machine casing. And the actual uh, thing here. This is polybenazidimazole sheets. I guess I don't have a pattern for that. But I think we can make it. No, it still requires. Um, oh, wait, no. We can make this inside here. UV machine hull. Uh, okay, if that's the case, then use that inside an assembler to make that. And we already have polybenazimazole inside our system. Doesn't know how to make it, so we'll just tell it to make it like this. Circuit 8. No, we'll just do it this way. So one UV machine hull should be possible. Is it already done? But that was quick. The yttrium barium cooperite wire is something that we've made a while ago, so that's not a problem. And I think this is also... No, it's not the superconductor for it, but it's fairly cheap anyway. Right, so I need to make the two reactors and get the other patterns for like the UV robot arms and UV uh, pistons and whatever things we need. 
So UV robot arm, we need motors, pistons, tons of these wire things here. And it also looks like we're going to need a UV tier circuit, which we already have. Okay, that's fine. All right, after like an hour later, we finally have the ultimate assembler. I even went ahead and made the UV 4M converter and the glitch happened again. So if I look up UV, I managed to stop it just in time for the UV pistons. Um, but for some reason, we nearly have 10,000 UV electric motors and 500 UV electric pistons. I don't know why it does that. It must have something to do with the extra input buses or something like that on the assembling line. But whatever, I, I don't care. We have this now. So all I want to do is just come in here and hook it up to probably just basic power right here. So temporarily, you go there, you go there. That works. Ah, I did not know that was a possible thing. Wait, so you're telling me I don't need? Whoa. Is it once you get to UV, it doesn't need the converter anymore? Uh, let's hope it doesn't explode. Let's grab ourselves. Well, it would have exploded by now. Uh, let's just take out ourselves a uh, dark tank here so we can grab out the ingredients. So liquid trinium and this stuff in here doesn't need a circuit so these go in with that and there we go we're making ourselves our tri tritanium uh, coils so we just need one of the sets of these to be able to just smelt the actual europium dust that we've been trying to make and then we should be able to make ourselves our data switch this machine alone is nearly consuming 2 million fe thank god we have the creative power source all right all 16 tritanium coils are done so i should be able to just place it here oh wait, i did the to just right click you're not supposed to change either all right structure complete so now if we look up the europium uh we have a thousand of the dust here let's just throw all 1000 into the blast melter here and does it run it's definitely running and it's going to take eight seconds to cook one and then i think we're going to have to throw it in a vacuum freezer does it require a special yeah it just requires liquid helium all right and everything is finally done we now have our network switch so we should be able to go ahead now and hook up the rest of our computation arrays to the research station. So to do that, let's figure out where we're going to be placing everything. Everything is just computer casing with one advanced computer casing in the center. So it's a tree by tree structure. So we should be able to just go tree by tree. And then right here, we have computation reception hatches. So they'll go here and here. That way now these can connect. All right. And then we can just build the rest of the thing. All right. Uh, structure incomplete. But that's because we need to add ourselves on a power hatch. So give me out another ZPM energy hatch. Do I have some? I don't. Let me make like 10. This thing also does require a maintenance hatch <laughs> and also one transmission hatch right there. That way now when we build the second one right here, we'll be able to connect this guy up here with a reception and then another reception right here and here. And then we'll have another transmission right here to go into the final one. And then we can loop it around and connect it into this connection right here. All right, now that they're all connected, we just need to run the cable to here. So connect you. And that's more or less it then. Add connection right here. The final thing we actually need to add to these guys here is actually a bridging component. Because um, otherwise, right now, the way that we have it connected is actually not going to do anything. So we put like the data orb in here with a ZPM electric pump because now we need to research UV pumps. It's not going to work. So instead of actually... In one of these uh, empty slots, we're going to add a bridging component. All right. And now if we look inside here, it says bridging enabled. So if we were to come in here and take this out and put it back in, now it is working. So we should be getting in total, I think like 168 or 160 ish uh, computation power in total. Uh, it's hard to know exactly, but why do we need so much computation power? Well, the final item, the micro universe orb. Is going to require research and that requires 144 cwu so yeah that's a lot so each one of these guys here are produced on 32 so 32 times 5 is uh no no it's 160 so we have plenty of computation power to run any recipe we need in here so i'm gonna end it there hope you all enjoyed and if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe if you're new and hit the notification bell while you're at it then as well so without any further ado Goodbye.